new season. Amen. Amen. It's a new season. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you, Lord, for this new season. We, we thank you, God, that even right now, God, in the natural, God, that we're transitioning into a new season. God, we thank you, God, that you're doing a new thing in our midst. So God, we pray, God, as we, as we enter into this new season, God, that you will make our spirits, make our hearts, make our, our minds sensitive to it, God. Let us be receptive, God. Help us, God, to receive what it is that you are doing in our midst. Even as the word, God, prepares to come forth, God, we ask, God, that you will allow our hearts to be fertile ground. God, I ask, God, that even right now that you will hide me behind your cross, speak to me, and speak through me. Allow me to decrease in your Holy Spirit to increase. God, have your way. We will forever give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And together we said amen and amen. Amen. It is a new season. Thank you, Bishop, Bishop uh, Jones. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you would, would you turn in your Bibles with me to uh, the book of Joshua, the Old Testament book of Joshua, <clears throat> Joshua chapter one, the Old Testament book of Joshua, Joshua chapter one, amen. Turn with me to Joshua chapter one, the Old Testament book of Joshua chapter one, and I'll be reading New King James Version, the New King James Version, and I'll be reading verses one through nine, Joshua chapter one, verses one through nine, the Old Testament, it's way in the beginning, way in the left side of your Bible, you have, you still have the Bible. I know some of us have our Bible apps, um, but let us turn to Joshua chapter 1. And it reads, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, his assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am given to them the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stunt, excuse, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For this, to, for, to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which, my, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from me to the right hand or to the left hand that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Church, with your prayers this morning, I like to preach from the thought, a new season, a new season. Church, one of the best times of the year, in my opinion, is the season that we're in right now. One of the best months of the year, aside from the month of June, amen, Sister Eda, aside from the month of June, uh, my birthday month, it's just the Edith's birthday month, is the month of September. The transition from summer to fall in August to September is one of the best seasons of the year. It's one of the best seasons of the year, in my opinion, because as most brothers know, it's the start of football season. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to act like sisters don't work, watch football as well. So as all of us know, it's one of the best seasons of the year because it's the start of the new football season. Whether it be high school, college, or pro, men, women, boys, and girls alike look forward to the beginning of a new football season. It's the best time of the year, in my opinion, because it's when the weather cools down and changes. And yes, we had great weather 
on yesterday. The autumn and the fall season has always been my favorite season. Not only is the weather wonderful and beautiful, but the fall foliage and colors are a sight to behold. Furthermore, the end of the summer and beginning of autumn is a time of year when children and adults go back to school alike. It's the time of the year when people are finishing up their vacations, getting back to life as usual and prepping themselves to finish the rest of the year, prayerfully to finish the rest of the year out strong. According to one blogger who shares similar sentiments and views as mine, uh, September is the best time of the year for new beginnings and a fresh start. Here what blogger Jeanette Lewis writes, and I quote, September is a month that signals new beginnings. More than January, the dawn of September feels like the start of a new year for a variety of reasons. Life settles into a routine. Vacations and lazy days of summer are over. Days are shorter and nights are cooler. The arc of the sun changes, making sun's light less intense. From childhood, she writes, we are programmed to see September as a fresh start. Childhood recollections trigger new energy we re when we remember new school clothes, new books, new teachers, and the challenges of meeting performance expectations in a higher grade. Such deep emotional programming makes September an excellent time to focus on new projects or to finish projects that stop during the summer. September is also an excellent time to take stock of the year. A full quarter of 2020 remains to make progress on the goals and aspirations that were important back in January." Close quote. In a real sense, when we step back and reflect on where we are in this time of year, in this time of our life and in our church, we're in a new season. All around us, change has taken place and we're in the beginning stages of a new season. New school year, new calendar year, new way of learning from virtual learning to in person, from in-person learning to virtual learning, new way of working from working at the job to working at home, new way of worshiping from worshiping inside of St. John to worshiping online through Zoom and Facebook, new pastor, in, in the words of young Mackenzie, from a woman pastor to a man pastor. And may I say this right now, I want to pause and say that the fact that she did not know that men could be pastors means that as a church, we're, made great, we're making great strides in life, but surely women are anointed of God to preach the gospel, to lead churches, and the pastors. So my prayer is that we have more paradigms like that, that we see more women passing, that we see more black presence, that we see more women in leadership. I just wanted to say that. And so, but as Young McKenzie said, we, we, we transition from a woman pastor to a, to a man pastor. Amen, somebody. We're, we're in a new season. Somebody say, somebody type new season. Church, I, I'm excited about this new season uh, because even spiritually speaking, something is definitely in the atmosphere. While it may sound churchy and cliche, I believe that for some of us watching on today, we're entering into a new season of our lives. Furthermore, I'm convinced that the only way we will experience and live into this new season is if we live with courage. And that's a word for somebody on today because for too long, you've been living like a scarecrow without courage. And God is telling us on today, God is telling you on today that some blessings, yes, you will get through your good looks. Some blessings will come because of your intelligence. Some blessings will come as a result of your last name. Some blessings will come as a result of your networks. However, in this season of your life, this blessing that God wants to deliver unto you will only come as a result of your courage to walk into this new door, to walk into this new life, you're going to need courage to walk into it. I'm talking about courage, church, courage to walk boldly into your calling, courage to do what God is calling you to do. Do me a favor, somebody shout courage, somebody type courage. We're going to need courage in this new season. But not only do we need courage to live the life that God has in store for us, but in our text today, 
Courage is what Joshua was going to need in order for him to walk into his new season. Upon reading verses one through two of chapter one, immediately we realize that the first chapter of Joshua is one filled with swift transition and change. The text says, Moses is now dead, and then God immediately challenges Joshua, commands Joshua, after a month of mourning and weeping, uh, the loss of Moses, God immediately commands Joshua to lead the people of Israel into the promised land. Now that Moses is dead, Joshua is now the new leader in Israel. Even though Joshua were close with Moses, Joshua ain't Moses and Moses ain't Joshua. They're two entirely different people. Moses was born around 1520 BC and Joshua 1500 BC. Therefore, they have two totally different life experiences. Moses was a leader whose strength was intercessory prayer, whereas Joshua was a military general. Moses grew up listening to eight tracks while Joshua streamed his music on his iPhone or Samsung Galaxy. Moses used a typewriter to write his speeches while Joshua used his laptop. Moses sent letters and messages through the mail while Joshua sends his messages via Facebook and Instagram. Moses listened to Chuck Berry James Brown, Aretha Franklin, and the Isley Brothers, or even Patti LaBelle and Gladys Knight on Versus Tonight, while Joshua listened to Lil Baby, Jay-Z, Meg Thee Stallion, and Beyonce. Moses prefers to wear his hair in an afro and bell bottoms, while Joshua wears a box fade with some skinny jeans. Moses wears Stacey Adams to church, while Joshua wears Jordans to church. Moses' generation thinks Joshua is out of order, while Joshua's generation thinks Moses' generation is out of touch. But the reality is this, church, either way is okay. The people just had to understand that Moses and Joshua are two different people from two different generations, cut from two different cloths, and express themselves in two totally different ways. Therefore, they shouldn't expect Moses to be Joshua, nor should Joshua be expected to act like, lead like, talk like, and be like Moses. At the end of the day, church, Moses was tasked with leading the old school generation into the promised land, and they didn't make it, while Joshua has the responsibility to lead a new school generation into the promised land. And to do so, God says he needs vision encourage. Joshua is a new leader with limited experience, but God is still calling him to do something he's never done. So I'm sure that Joshua is thinking to himself, if Moses, if Moses, this great leader, uh, if Moses, this great leader couldn't lead uh, us into the promised land, how can I do it? This task that Joshua had wouldn't be easy, church, but how many of us know that everything worth having takes courage to obtain? It takes courage to be your best. It takes courage to be all that God calls us to be. It takes courage to live a better life. It takes courage to live the life that we've always dreamed of living. It takes courage, church. It takes courage to be your best, uh, best self in the midst of all that we're going through. It takes courage to have joy in an anti-Black world. It takes courage to be Black and proud on a very practical level, church. It takes courage to bite your tongue when you want to bless somebody out. It takes courage to go high when you want to be petty and go low. It takes courage to hold it down for your family when you're tired and exhausted. It takes courage to live and walk into your new season that God is calling us to live and to walk into. And you know that and you know you know that you know that you're ready for a new season when you're tired of the status quo. When you know you're ready for a new season when you're tired of the same old same. You know you're ready for a new season when you're tired of doing things how we always did it. You know you're ready for a new season when you're tired of life 
being so predictable. You know you're ready for a new season when you're tired of not growing. You know you're ready for a new season when you're tired of just being tired. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to confess it to me because I know that there's some people on here today who are ready to walk into their new season, run into their new season, charge into their new season, praise and their new season, worship in their new season. It's time for a new season. I know you're ready. The question is how many people need your phone? Please use your phone. They make somebody. But the question is this. How can we walk into a new season? Help me somebody. With all that's going on, on in life, with all that we're facing, with all that we're going through, how can we walk into our new season when we tried to step out on faith and things didn't go our way? How can we have the courage to still walk into our new season when we got haters all around us, when our family members are doubting us, when people are trying to hold us back, when we're short on money, when our money is funny and our change is straight? How can we walk into our new season? Hallelujah, somebody. The first thing the text teaches us is that we can walk into our new season. If you want to walk into your new season, if you want to walk into, if you want to walk, if you want to walk into your new season, all of us have to understand and realize that we have a pending promise. Yes, we have a pending promise. Somebody write pending promise. Church, when the Lord revealed this to me, I literally shouted in my spirit, all of us have a pending promise. If you want to live, let me say it a different way, if you want to live courageously in your new season, we have to accept God's pending promise. Look at the text, look at the text. God tells Joshua in verse 2, look, look, look at what God tells Joshua. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Watch verse 3. Verse 3, God says, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. And again, in verse 6, God says it again. Be strong and of good courage. For this, for to this people, you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. On three separate occasions, God promised to give the land of Joshua to the Israelites. Uh, excuse me, God promised to give the land to, the, uh, to Joshua and the Israelites. And just in case you did not know, God is like our parents. And when God repeats himself, you know it's important. God does not like repeating himself. So when God repeats himself, God is mean. God means what he says and says what he means. So you know the promise is important because God told Joshua about this promise on three separate occasions. And even as I'm preaching this sermon, I can tell you thinking to yourself, how is this a pending promise? Watch this, church. Watch this. When we go back and read chapter 17 of the book of Genesis, verse 8, chapter 17 of Genesis, verse 8, we will see that God promised to give the land of Canaan to Abraham and his descendants a long time ago. Research tells us that over 450 years has now passed between Abraham receiving the promise and Joshua receiving the promise. When used as an adjective, the word pending, Reverend Marshall, means awaiting a conclusion begun but not completed and about to happen. Uh, it's like that money. Uh, it's like that money that we take to the bank and deposit in our checking accounts. Uh, then, then we check our accounts. Then it says the money is pending. It's there. It's showing, but it's yet, it's yet not available. Uh, the promise is there. The money is in the bank account, but the bank says it's pending because it's not yet there. In the same way, church, God is saying the promise is there. You can walk into it, but all you got to do is have courage and walk into your new season. And check this out, church. God made this promise 
450 years ago to the children of Israel, but it's not God's fault that the promise has not been concluded or concluded. Or concluded. Let me say it again. It's not God's fault that the promise has not been concluded or completed. For all of my Bible readers on the call on today, you know, we know that the reason that the children of Israel hadn't claimed the promise yet is because of their own disobedience. Church folk don't like this kind of stuff. God promised the land of Israel, excuse me, God promised the land of Canaan to Moses and his generation, but they wandered around for 40 years in disobedience to God in the wilderness. They could have already possessed the land. They could have already had the promise, but they got in their own way. God wasn't withholding the promise. Their lifestyle was withholding the promise. God isn't withholding your promise, but sometimes if we want to be honest and real with ourselves, our lifestyles are withholding our promise. God, God isn't withholding your promise. Your doubt is withholding your promise. God is not withholding your promise. Your fear is withholding your promise. The promise was pending because the people did not do what they had to do to receive the promise that God had for them. I'm talking about the promises of God. God would not write you a check that God cannot cash. God's promises never come back bark in sufficient funds. God's word never returns back to God void. For all the promises of God are yes and amen. If God has made you a promise, you can take that to the bank, baby. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how silly it is. It's a promise from God. That new job, it's a promise. That, that business, it's a promise. Your children and grandchildren being blessed, it's a promise. That new church, it's a promise. If God made you a promise, it's a promise, church. This new season in your life, it's a promise. We ought to claim the promises of God. We ought to rejoice about the promises of God. We ought to receive the promises of God. Preach, Mac, I'm doing the best I can. If, if God made us a promise, God's promise is yes and amen. But watch this, watch this, church. We need to claim the promises of God just like you claim that winning lottery ticket. I don't know if anybody ever won the lottery here, but if you have, I hope you still got some money left over. Amen, somebody. But just like, just like somebody says, I owe you some money, and they say, you can come and get it. We go and get that money. In the same way God says, I have a promise for you, now come and get your promise. God says, God says, claim it. Claim God's promises. Claim your healing. Claim your blessings. Claim your joy. Claim your peace. Claim what you want from God. Claim your new season. I double dog dare you to claim what God has for you. Can I preach it like I feel at church? In this new season, your promise is no longer pending. Walk into your promise. In this new season, you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're joyful and not depressed. You're an employer and not an employee. You're living in abundance and not lack. God is saying, I made you a promise and I keep my promises. I don't know about you, church, but in this season of my life, I'm courageously getting my life together because I need my promises from God. Whatever you promise me, God, be it unto me. I'm ready to walk into my new season. Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm preaching longer than I thought I was. That's good, church. Secondly, 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 how can we walk into our new season? Brother Bourne, Brother Bourne, we can walk into our new season. When we understand, when we understand that there's all, this is good, y'all, that, that there's always a preparation process before promotion. There's always a preparation process before promotion. In verses seven through eight, listen to what God tells Joshua. He says, do not turn from it to your right hand or to your left hand so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law should not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. Reverend Dominica, when I was in seminary in Richmond, I used to always hear this saying, trust the process. Struggling with a class, trust the process. 
struggling with these new concepts they were teaching us. Trust the process. Wrestling with my Christology and my soteriology. Trust the process. Broke and didn't have any money. Trust the process. No financial aid coming through. Trust the process. No matter what we were going through, no matter how hard it was, it was always the same answer. Trust the process. But, but if we're being honest, preachers aren't the only one who need to trust the process. In life, we all need to trust the process. You will never have promotion in life without process. Because more times than not, here it is, when you skip the process, you'll sabotage the promotion. Let me say it again. When you skip the steps, when you skip the process in life, you'll end up sabotaging the blessing and the promotion. There's always a process before elevation. If you don't go through the process, you won't appreciate, you won't have gratitude for the promotion nor the elevation. Let me see if I can make this a little clearer. Whenever you go to buy a car, they do credit checks. You gotta be approved for a loan. We have to complete the paperwork, get tags and title. It's a process. You buy a new home, they check your credit. They look at your bank statements. You have to get your house inspected. You pay closing costs, pay to realtors. It's a process. When you get a new job, phone interview, in-person interview, background check, drug test, check your references, it's a process. Apply to a new college or university, complete your application, pay an application fee, write an essay, submit transcript, it's a process. In the 80s, if you wanted to have a good jury curl, let your soul glow, you had to put your hair through a process. We cannot have promotional anything in life without a process. Process always comes before promotion. Thus, when we walk into our new season, we must yield to the process. Like anything in life, the process may be longer than expected. It may be uncomfortable and unbearable. It may be arduous and difficult. We may not like the process of the process. We may not like those who are in charge of the process, but we have to understand that the process is put in place for a reason. We must understand that in order for God to trust you in this new season, we must yield and submit to the process because there's always preparation. Uh, there's always a preparation process before promotion to get where God is taking you, to get to where God is taking us in life. We have to trust the process. We have to trust the process. And lastly, lastly, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm preaching like a Baptist this morning, taking too long, but we're almost done. Finally, after, after we answer the pending promise, after we go through the preparation process, we must trust, <laughs> we must trust God's persistent presence. We must trust God's persistent presence. God tells Joshua over and over and over again, wherever you go, I'll be with you. Hallelujah, somebody. Here it is in verse five, God says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. In verse nine, God says, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God was with Moses. God talked to Moses. God directed Moses. God was with Moses in the same way God was with Moses. God was with Joshua. God talked to Joshua. God directed Joshua. God was with Joshua. God was with Moses. God was always with them. So listen to me clearly, church. No matter what you do in this new season of your life, no matter where you go in this new season, no matter who you're with in this new season, no matter what comes your way in this new season, God is always going to be with you. Let somebody shout right there. God is going to be with you. God will talk to you. God will walk with you. God will be with you. God will order your steps and your stuff. How do I know that God will be with you? If I can use my imagination, I've caused some witnesses to the stand. 
talk to me, Richard Allen. God was with me when I purchased my freedom. God was with me when I walked out of St. George Methodist Church. God was with me when I started the Free African Society. God was with me when I started the AME Church. Talk to me, Harriet Tubman. God was with me when I was enslaved. God was with me when I made 19 trips back to the South to free slaves on the Underground Railroad. Talk to me, Jesse Owens. God was with me when I ran track at Ohio State. God was with me when I won the gold in the 1936 Olympics. God was with me when I showed up Hitler. Talk to me. God was with Fannie Lou Hamer. God was with Rosa Parks. God was with Martin Luther King Jr. God was with Jackie Robinson. And God has been with St. John AME Church for 165 years. God has been with us. God was with us when Reverend James Sterrett organized the church. God was with us under Reverends O.D. Robinson and E.D. Rice. In 1943, when our church burned down, God was with us. In 1945, when the church was rebuilt under Harrison, uh, under Bishop Harrison Bryant, God was with us. Under Reverend Gray, God was with us. Under Reverend Grant, God was with us. Under Reverend Faust, God was with us under Reverend Wilson. God was with us uh, under, under Reverend Dr. Peggy Elizabeth Wall. God was with us. And the good news is, church, God is still with us. I don't care where you go. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what we face. God is with us. Friends, we serve an ever-present God. We serve a God whose presence is always persistent. The psalmist wrote, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend in heaven, there you are. If I make my bed in hell, there you are. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even your hand shall lead me there and your right hand shall hold me. Wherever we go, church, God is with us and God is there. God is always there. He's always with us. Glory, hallelujah. We serve a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. God is always by our side. Can anybody testify on today that God has always been with you? When you were running the streets, there was God. When you were losing your mind, God. When you needed an answer to prayer, God. When you needed a job promotion, God. When you got approved for the car loan or the business loan, God. Where would you be without God? Here's your shout, church. If God did it before, God can surely do it again. God is there. God is here. God will always be with us. God, God is with us in the hospital room. God is with us on our sick bed. God is with us on the way to work. God is with us in our communities. God is with us at school. God is with our children. God is with our families. God is always with us. God is with this church called St. John's. God is always with God. It's on the west side of Baltimore. God is on the east side of Baltimore. God is in Baltimore County. God is always there. Where can we go and leave God's presence? Answer, nowhere. Because God is always there. Church, walk into your new season with boldness. Why? Because God is there. Walk into your new season with courage. Why? Because God is there. Walk into your new season by faith. Why? Because God is with us. Wherever we go, we can walk into our new season because God is there. I don't know about you, church, but I'm ready for this new season. I'm ready to run into this new season. I'm ready to jump into this new season. Why? Because God is always there. Whatever you're going through, God is there. Sickness, God is there. I can't help myself. Sadness, God is there. Joy, God is there. Wherever you go, God is always there. And so, yes, this new season, COVID-19, it ain't surprised God. God is here. Virtual learning, no shock to God. God is here. Virtual worship, no surprise to God. God is here. Funny money, no shock to God. God is here. God is always there. And if God is here, God will be there. And, and, and that's the good news about God. God is in our past. God is in our present. 
and God has already gone before us in our future. So the good news is that there's nowhere we can go where God would not be. So church, hallelujah, walk into your new, let us walk together collectively, individually into our new season because God is here. God was with Moses. And as God was with Moses, God was with Joshua. And as God was with Joshua, God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you're watching on today, if you're watching on today, if you're watching on today, you hear me talking about this great God. I want to invite you to, I want to invite you to accept this God as, as your Savior, as, as, your, as your heavenly father, as your heavenly mother, as your heavenly parent. I want you to accept this God. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. And when he died, he sent us this gift called the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that, that lives within us. It's the Holy Spirit that leads us and, and guides us. It's the Holy Spirit that, that watches our front, our back, our sides. It's the Holy Spirit. And so perhaps the Holy Spirit is measuring at your heart right now. Perhaps you're feeling something. You're, you're feeling a desire to, to grow closer to God. You're feeling a desire to try God out again. I invite you to. I invite you to, to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. To accept him as, as head of your life. To accept him so he can lead you and guide you. So he can walk with you into your new season. So he can guide you into your new season. So he can, so he can order your steps and your stops. I, you know, I was, this past week, it was my father's birthday, September 9th, and I took him out to dinner. And after, after dinner, I, I was taking him someplace and, and I asked him for the address. And he said, you know, he said, son, I know how to get there. I said, well, dad, I understand you know how to get there, but let me get the address so I can put it in my, in my GPS. Because how many of you know that sometimes all of us don't give directions the same? Some of us wait to the last minute to say, turn right. And here we are, turning. But if I have the GPS, the GPS tells me in one mile, make a right turn. Then it tells me again, in a half a mile, make a right. Then it tells me again, in, in 200 feet, make, make a right. In the same way, we have a GPS called the Holy Spirit. And it comes with accepting Jesus Christ. And with that, with, with the Holy Spirit, let us say, my brother, go left. My sister, go right. Apply for this job. Leave this relationship. Apply for this loan. Go over here. Go over there. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this and do that. The Holy Spirit leads us and and guides us. And the gift of the, of the Holy Spirit comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Membership has its privileges. And part of the privilege of being a part of the body of Christ is we get the Holy Spirit. We receive eternal life. And so if you're watching me on today, you never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. Feel free again to, you can write a comment in the chat. You can type it on, on the Facebook chat. You can type it on the Zoom chat. You can you can hit me in my inbox. You can, as many ways, you can write a letter to the church. There's many ways to get in contact with us, but we would love to introduce you into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Secondly, if you need a new church home, if you need a new church home, we would love to be a new church home. St. John's is a wonderful church. It's an awesome church, and we would love to have you. We, we would love for you to grow with us, for you to come be a part, come for you to come make history with us. We are a historic church and we're still making history. We want you to come make history with us. So again, if you need a new church home, you want to join our body of Christ. Again, there's plenty of ways to get in contact with us. You can email us. I believe the email address is either connect at St. John Amy Church or contact at St. John Amy Church. Somebody will put it in the chat. Amen. Somebody will put it in the chat. And so we invite you today. We invite you uh, today. If you, need to if you need to rededicate your life to Christ, the same way, reach out to us, contact us. You say, you know, I've been away from the Lord, and it's connect at St. John Amy Church. Connect at St. John Amy Church. Amen. You can, you can email us there if you want to rededicate your life. You want to 
accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you want to join that church, that's the email, connect at St. John AME Church, or you can message us on Facebook. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for what you're doing right now. We thank you, God, that somebody, God, just got the courage. <clears throat> somebody, God, just, just made up their mind that they're going to walk into their new season. Somebody, God, just today, God, is, is going to be the day, God, that they, they, they can look back on, on September 13th, the day, God, that, that it's the first day of the rest of their lives. God, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for persons who are coming to Christ. We thank you, God, for persons who are, who are coming and joining our church. We thank you, God, for persons who are rededicating their lives. We thank you, God, for persons who are walking into their new season. God, we thank you, God, for together, this is a new season. God, we thank you. We thank you, God. God, we pray, God, that you heal. Heal, God. Go into the emergency room, God. Touch Sister Joyner, God. Go into our sick and shut in, God. Touch and bless them, God. We pray, God, for your supernatural covering, God, over our St. John's membership, God, that you can keep, that you keep us healed and, and healthy, God. We pray that you bless us, God, financially, God, and spiritually. We pray that you bless our children and grandchildren who are in school, God, learning, God. We, we pray that you bless, God, the teachers who are teaching, God, the persons that who go or who are, uh, who are our first responders, God. We, we pray, God, that you continue to protect us and to bless us, God, and Provide for us, God, and that you keep us, God. We, we pray, God, for our seniors, God, of the church, God, though our elders, God, who have paved the way for us, God, and who are still paving the way for us. We, we thank you for them, God. We thank you, God, for our young adults, God, who are stepping up in leadership and in ministry, God, for our young people, God, who are watching us, God, and who are falling in our footsteps. God, we thank you, God, for what you're doing at St. John AME Church. We thank you, God, Reverend Dr. Peggy Walker, for all that she has done at St. John. We thank you, God, for Pastor Wilson and Pastor Faust and all the pastors, God, before, uh, before us, God, who have, who have paved the way, God, for St. John. God, we thank you, God, for what you're doing in this new season, God. We know, God, that we can't have a new season, God, without the prior seasons. So, God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for all the lessons learned, for all the scars, for all the blessings, for, for the strengthening, for the sharpening. We thank you, God. We will forever give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And together we said amen and amen. Amen, church.